I'm from the Big Ten Network. Um, I'm the director of digital and consumer marketing. Um, and you know, she asked the question of, of who's a Big Ten fan, but I think as, as we kind of go into this, just as a let's, let's get excited, I know most people in Chicago have a connection to the Big Ten, whether they're alumni or, or family is an alumni. So if we could all give a big shout of what your team is, whether that's Go Blue or Go Terps or Go Cats, we're all going to do it at the same time. I'm hoping there are enough Big Ten connections in here to try to get some excitement before we get going here, all right? So think about your team or teams. And uh, on the count of three, we're all going to yell. And if you have multiple teams, just, just pick your favorite one. Uh, so one, two, three. That didn't work as well as I thought, because I thought one team was going to come out on top. But um, so I have a, uh, just to kind of set the, set the table here um, and set the stage. So the Big Ten Network um, is sometimes kind of um, positioned with the Big Ten Conference, and, and rightly so. Um, but we are actually uh, owned by, by Fox, 51% owned by Fox and 49% owned by the conference. Um, so we were the kind of the first college network, um, and that's kind of been followed suit by the SEC network and the Pac-12 network. Um, so as you can kind of, kind of go through, um, we are in more than 60 million homes, and that third bullet is, is kind of key for us, um, btn to go and as we talk about and jump into our promoted campaigns and where we're truly focused is, is on btn to go And kind of through my, through, you know, as we, as we move forward through the, through the um, presentation, this is the overarching topic that we use at the Big Ten Network. Um, so, you know, before Twitter and Facebook and, and the notion of sponsored and, and promoted campaigns, you know, the idea of reaching viewers on another network in real time didn't really exist. You know, it existed on our air, on our, on our linear network. Um, but our whole goal as we kind of work through this process and what we've been learning is reaching viewers on another network in real time, right? So the Big Ten Network does not always have the best games. We understand that. Um, you know, ESPN, ABC, you know, they pay a lot of money for the Big Ten rights. And they have the first choice, usually, um, to pick their games, right? So we need to figure out what, you know, what advantages do we have when Michigan, Utah um, is opening up the season on Fox and maybe post game on Fox that they're not going to be talking about Michigan, Utah um, as much as we will be talking about Michigan, Utah. So this is the overall theme as we work through um, the presentation that we'll see. Um, so you know, this is titled Tweets by Objective, but it could be clearly tweets or, or, or posts by objective. But Clearly, number one goal is tune in. Uh, that's what we want. Tune in whether that's linear network or on BTN to go. Um, the second one, clearly, the BTN to go downloads. Um, that's our app. Um, it's uh, you know on on the app and then in Google Play on iTunes. And then moving moving forward, we have video views and Amplify, which we'll get into um, as a kind of an ad sales revenue driver there. And then clearly, as we kind of just touched on, uh, the channel changer. So promoted versus organic. And you know, I'm going to kind of speak in very practical terms here, because this is very easy to do. right? And, and we have a moderate budget. I'm not going to throw out numbers, but I'm going to throw out a lot of statistics here, because people love to tweet about stats. My whole presentation is really, really tweetable stats here. And so this is why it's going to be fun. Um, so this is you know, a down and dirty tweet. right? Retweet if you're happy football is back. Watch Ohio State spring game on live and BTN and BTN to go, right? We're fishing for some, for some maybe organic play here. Um, and then, you know, people always ask, you know, and, and with the latest Twitter news and, you know, as uh, the stock is falling, et cetera, you know, I'm going to think big picture here, and we view Twitter as a successful tool, tool for us, right? Um, so, you know, on the, on the right hand side, uh, we have the organic kind of content of it, right? So it was tweeted, it's out there. Um, it's, it's riding based off of some retweets. And then we put you know, $2,500 right, behind it. And you can see the difference. Um, again, this is promoted, and we'll get into it a little bit further, but this is clearly promoted to the Columbus region. right? So as we talk about it, there's not going to be huge numbers, because we're worried about circ certain markets. right? We're worried about New York now that Rutgers is, Rutgers is in. We're worried about Baltimore now that Maryland is here. Um, so for this example, we're targeting Columbus. And as you can see, the, the engagement rate sports benchmark is 4.3%. 
um, you know, on the, on the promoted side, we're reaching that now. On the organic side, we, we weren't. Um, and then there, our cost per engagement is about 24 cents. And as we walk through some of these numbers, you'll probably be asking yourself, you know, is that, is that good? Um, and that's, you know, what we're learning, right? And we're kind of throwing some things against the wall as, as kind of that's been the theme uh, throughout the day. Um, but for us, that's really good for us because, again, we're kind of looking even more granular to the, to the target. So this is our, these are our top promoted tweets over overarching for the fall of 2014. Um, so impression-wise, over 3 million impressions, uh, engagement 136,000. And then these two videos, um, you know, they started uh, essentially as, as organic. And then we saw that we rode the, ra rode the wave a little bit, let it get out there, and then started putting dollars behind it. Again, tailored to, so here we have the Iowa on BTN Twitter handle and then Ohio State on BTN. So we have respective Twitter accounts for each school. Um, so again, clearly targeting Columbus again. Um, and then Iowa gets a little harder to, to target. Um, that's not a key uh, Nielsen rating for us. So we're clearly going even zip code focus uh, when we get to Iowa City. And BTN to go mobile app campaign. Um, this has been this was a really interesting case study from our end. Um, you know, last year we rolled out and uh, introduced Maryland and Rutgers to the Big Ten conference. And um, from our end, we had to introduce BTN to go um, for fans that clearly did not know what that was, as they were they were new to the Big Ten. Um, and so we've. We rolled out a very large campaign um, to, for the install apps. And this was um, you know, targeted to iPhone users or Android users. And you know, 1.3 to click rate and then cost per app like, is 53 cents, right? Again, that's where we're learning, is that good or bad? But then the flip side of that is you know, 53 cents, um, part of the BTN to go is a kind of a paid model. Um, if you have BTN, uh, network as part of your cable, you get you can watch games for free on BTN, right? But there are certain games, Olympic sports, right? So if you're a Michigan baseball fan, and we're not showing that on our linear network, we're going to show it produced by our student U. Um, so you can only see that through the app, and there's a monthly and there's an annual fee. So we're saying 53 cents per app click. Again. Seeing on the as we'll get get into it the conversion of that, seeing if they actually pursued it and downloaded it, um, but then the tiers are hey, it's 9.99 per month or 49.99 annually. So we can see kind of that revenue and, and going back to it and saying hey, 53 cents that that may be good and it's a good starting point. And this is the overarching campaign of our BTN to go mobile app again, s strictly primarily focused on. Maryland and Rutgers, so that New York, New Jersey region, and then uh, Baltimore and DC. And as you can see, you know, the cost per app went up. Again, we're talking a little bit larger number here, um, but that app click rate kind of stayed consistent there. So getting into um, promoted video views, and that's where as a content provider and a publisher, um, as a Big Ten network, this is where we want to be seen as kind of a leader in this space, especially on the collegiate level. Um, so a lot of our video views do go, do go organically, and we just let it ride organic, whereas this is where ad sales comes into play. And this is where the revenue and the ROI, true ROI of it, um, tends, to, tends to see itself kind of play out. Because again, tying tune in to promoted tweets and sponsored posts is really hard right now. Um, so over our, overarching, just under three million impressions. Um, you know, the key here is that cost per view, um, 37 cents again, um, tying that back to ad sales and understanding that, hey, what are, what's our ad sales team selling uh, against our video views and, and ultimately how many video views can we guarantee? Um, and here's an example of a, of a tune in. Uh, this is uh, Nebraska related. So again, it's, it's a very, you see that, that cost per view lower we were just focusing on Lincoln, Nebraska here. So a really interesting case study that Nebraska fans are very, very uh, rapid about their football team. And it, it goes to show you that, again, tweeted it organically and then pumped it up a little bit um, with promoted tweets. So the views, um, you know, this has a pre-roll, which we'll get into it. But 
Um, so that's 20,000 views, and then obviously clearly pre-roll um, as well. And then with our video views, we were one of the first content um, producers to have a, a larger relationship with Snappy TV. So Snappy TV, before Snappy TV was bought by Twitter, um, allowed us to upload video with pre-roll, and then Twitter um, smartly, smartly purchased them. And with the, the Snappy tool, you know, this is playing in line in your Twitter feed, right? And um, every time that we share a video, there is a pre-roll. And our pre-roll is five seconds. It does not go over five seconds. It, it could go lower than five seconds, but we actually don't put a pre-roll longer than five seconds. And so, you know, Luke, stepping into the Amplify program, um, Intel has been our largest um, Amplify partner. And essentially, we work hand in hand with Twitter. And they have said, you know, if, if Intel is going to get a piece of the pie and Big Ten Network is going to get a piece of the pie, so is Twitter, which is understandable. Um, so in this case, Twitter came to us, and this was a men's basketball related um, relationship, and asked, they want to be part of our, our pre-roll content because um, they saw kind of how, how successful we were getting organically. And with the Intel, um, <coughs> Twitter helped us. And Intel actually decided that they wanted to put money behind the Amplify program, but actually do it themselves. So it was an interesting relationship where we were, we were cutting the clips, tweeting it out. Intel said, OK, we, we like that clip. And then they were putting actually money behind their own um, tweets. So they were doing all the, all the promoted campaigns from their own end, which is a little bit um, of an interesting relationship. Um, but it worked out well. So we have a clip that I'm going to try to play. Bumblesby and White, the five on the floor for Iowa. Hawkeyes do have a timeout. Gazelle got law on him. Utah throws it up. Western's going to have to fire a sling T, and we've got overtime. Woo-hoo! Well, you can imagine the game went to overtime. Um, it was a great game, but the key that, besides the whole play, um, was the Intel pre-roll. So Twitter actually synced us up with a Vine artist, um, and the pre-roll is five seconds of a, of a very cool Vine artistry um, that really, really aligns well with the, with the pre-roll. Um, as you said, it kind of it tells the story uh, versus straight pre-roll. Um, so it was a good shot, but um, moving on. So you know, uh, the question is ROI, and that comes up internally a lot. You know, we're spending um, a moderate sized budget on our promoted campaigns and our sponsored campaigns aligned with Facebook as well. And you know, our next step is the notion of conversion tracking and retargeting within Twitter. And right now, as, as Dave, ha you know, Jerry, and Howard, Howard uh, often talk about, they talk about conversion tracking on, on air often. Um, they don't. That's a, that's a horrible joke. Horrible joke. <laughs> still, still with me. Um, so conversion tracking, right now, we're going to be uh, entering in the fall with a, with a mobile, a Twitter mobile preferred partner uh, with Adjust. And on that end, every, every URL that we share, uh, we're going to understand the purchasing funnel and the consumer experience. So we'll know if someone's clicking on that app install button and actually downloading it and converting to it. Um, so that's, that's going to be a next step for us. And then next off of that, we'll be retargeting, um, so a, a step we haven't taken, a little bit behind, but we're going to jump into it uh, in, in advance of the fall. And then, you know, Wanted to jump in. I know this has a little bit been uh, more Twitter um, prominent, but uh, what we've seen on the Facebook side of things, and I think this is a story that's been told throughout the day today um, about how you know sponsored posts and video, especially video, is how prevalent it is on Facebook, but how inflated the numbers truly are. Um, you know, from our end, the tune-in messaging usually on TV is at the end of a spot. Uh, which is not going to work digitally. Um, because people are, again, as this graph is showing you, clearly dropping off. Um, you know, Three seconds, uh, all I want to do is, is show an end card in three seconds. Um, but as you can see, no one's getting through a 30-second spot. And rarely ever is anyone ever getting through a 15-second spot. So from our end, 
as you can see, you know, 50% of Facebook video views dropped off in the first 25% of the video. Um, so right now, you know, we're in the model of not thinking so TV centric and, and, and thinking a little bit more digital centric and telling that story. So, you know, a few examples, you know, we'll show um, on, our, on our sponsored campaigns, we'll start with, on the, on the right hand side is, is two Michigan State examples where we're flashing the date, we're flashing the time first, um, and then, you know, the story is told after that. And it's a 10, 15 second story. It's not 30 seconds. And then this example, the Rutgers example, is that, that kind of that lower third is there throughout the video. So right now we're in the midst, midst of testing uh, what's truly working, right? So if I know that 50% 50, 50 of Facebook video views are, being, are dropped off, that's okay, because I know that they saw the message within that first second, um, or two seconds, or three seconds. So we're going through that model right now. It's, it's kind of been tailored to TV. What we put on TV is what we put on our sponsored campaigns. Um, but we're, we're kind of switching that model um, and looking forward to kind of how that impacts um, the fall season coming up. And as, like I said, I would be, I would be quick and uh, hopefully get some, some insights. And for our Michigan State fans, hopefully we'll have another good year. Thank you.